Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about the drum gear basics for someone getting back into the drums or starting out drums for the first time. The question of what do I buy or when do I buy it, when do I fork out the cash for a drum set come up a lot among my students and I see this topic online and in forums all the time, especially among people who haven't played in a while who are getting back into the drums. So if that's you or if you know somebody who's getting into the drums for the first time or getting back into the drums after years of not playing, then this is for them. Let's talk about how to approach this frugally. So I say that word frugal because I'm approaching this from the perspective of I don't wanna fork out a bunch of money right now if I don't know for sure that I'm gonna be interested in this for the long haul. And this is definitely the approach that a lot of parents will take with, with kids, especially young kids starting out with drums. You don't wanna just buy them a drum set right off the bat because you want them to kind of get going and get the feel of it, see how they like it, decide if they are in it for the long haul. And I think it's wise not to spend a lot of money up front on something like this anyways. It makes more sense to kind of grow over time, accumulate the gear you need as you need it, work on your skills and technique as a drummer before you accumulate all the gear. So having said that, the first thing that you will need to buy is just a practice pad and a pair of sticks. Now practice pads can come in a lot of different uh, shapes and sizes, usually in the 20 to $40 range, though there are really expensive, fancy exceptions, and there probably are some that are even cheaper. Really, it doesn't matter too much as long as it's something that you can hit with your stick and it bounces. You can even use a computer mouse pad. If you lay it on a table or a flat surface, it actually has a nice rebound to it and it makes for a very cheap practice pad. I usually recommend 5A sticks just because they're the, the middle size. They're a good all-purpose stick for really playing any kind of genre of music and especially for getting started on the drums. The reason a pad and sticks are really the only things that you need to get started is because when you start playing drums, you're really focused more on technique and grip and making sure you're holding the sticks right, playing some singles, playing alternating singles some doubles, paradiddles, things like that. You're also practicing counting, playing quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and those are things that you can do right there on a pad, that's all you need. A lot of times the next step after that is to begin working on the feet. And so at that point, it is really good to have a bass drum pedal because it can be tricky just tapping your feet on the floor, although you can definitely do that when you're starting out working on coordination. I'd recommend buying a pretty cheap bass drum pedal, like 50 bucks, nothing fancy, and you can actually rig that to create a practice kick drum at home in a few different ways. These are just some of my thoughts on it. As long as you've got a piece of wood or something to clamp the pedal onto so that it's firmly grounded, it's not gonna go anywhere, it's not gonna tip over, then you can slide that up against stuff. If you happen to have an old sofa or an old couch lying around, then this can actually work pretty well if you don't mind beating it up a bit. Otherwise, I really like using a cajon inside its case. My case happens to be padded, so it works really well for that. You can experiment with any other kind of wood surface, maybe put some foam on it, some cloth, throw a blanket over it. There are really a lot of different ways you can make this work and have a pretty quiet practice kick drum that doesn't feel too far unlike a real kick drum. At this point, you can really practice any basic groove that you're learning on drum set because you've got your pad here for both of your hands and you've got your pedal down there for your foot. You could even tap your left foot along if you're working on some hi-hat left foot coordination stuff. So there you've got the bare practice minimums. At this point, if you're practicing a lot and you're playing all the time, I would highly recommend getting a good drum throne. A good drum stool can be valuable for a few reasons, but the main one is just the posture issue. If you've got an uncomfortable or hard throne, it's gonna be harder to sit up straight and have good posture. It's gonna be more easy to develop a little bit of lower back pain while you're playing. I noticed that a lot when I was playing all the time in high school and I had this cheap throne that came with the first drum set I bought and I was getting a little bit of that lower back pain but as soon as I upgraded to a, a better, much nicer, well-padded throne, the back pain was gone and it was way more comfortable. I could sit there for hours and just keep playing and not have to think about that kind of pain of what I'm sitting on. So it's really good to eliminate that distraction, be able to be comfortable and focus on what you're practicing. So I, I think that's a very important piece of gear to get early on. That can be anywhere in the 75 to $150 range. You could even go to the music store, sit on a few, test them out, make sure that it's sturdy, doesn't squeak too much, and is well padded. That's really all you're looking for. So at this point, we've pretty much got everything we need except for a drum set. Usually my advice for approaching buying a first drum set is look at the used options. I've noticed these days there are a lot of really good deals on used drum sets that maybe retailed for a thousand bucks, and now you can get them for 300, 400, 500 dollars. 
You want to make sure that the shells aren't warped, that the bearing edges aren't chipped. As long as the shells are in good shape, then those drums are a solid foundation from which you can make a lot of upgrades in the future. If the shells are good, then it's got good bones. You've got good bones and you can add anything on on top of that. You can make those drums sound great and you can use them for years. So we've got our pad, our sticks, our drum stool, and we've got a basic cheap, maybe used drum set here. It's working, it's getting the job done. We can replace the heads on it if we want it to sound better. That's a fairly inexpensive upgrade. Heads are about a dollar an inch. Most likely though, the first major upgrade we'll wanna do are the cymbals. If the kit came with cymbals, they were probably really cheap. Uh, the stock cymbals that just come with that drum set, most of the time they're really cheap and they sound awful, but they're great for practicing and serving that purpose. But as soon as you get out, you start playing gigs maybe, that's the first upgrade you're gonna to wanna to make. Symbols are also one of the more expensive upgrades to make, but they're definitely a necessary one because you can't make bad or cheap symbols sound good. There's really nothing you can do about that. You've got to have a good symbol if it's going to sound good. Now, whether or not you make this your first major upgrade, that really just depends on what you're doing. If you're not really playing any gigs yet, there's really not a need to get good symbols yet. But as soon as other people are hearing your drums, you want your symbols to sound good. Now, another very important upgrade um, in my opinion, is the kick pedal and the hi-hat stand. Those two pieces of hardware are unique in that they have moving parts. The kick pedal is obviously moving. You're kicking the drum with it. It's, it's got a lot of moving parts. It's got a chain, it's got springs, all this stuff. The uh, hi-hat pedal is also a fairly complex piece of hardware with moving parts. There is a vast difference in quality between cheap kick pedals, cheap hi-hat stands, and expensive, nice, sturdy kick drum pedals and hi-hat stands. I've noticed a distinct difference in how precise and controlled I'm able to play the hi-hat with a good stand versus a cheap stand. A lot of times cheap stands can be a little bit wobbly and a little bit rickety. You might hear some squeaking, hear some other noises, extraneous noises going on while you're playing, which isn't good. And again, that's fine when you're just practicing, when you're getting started, but as you're playing more gigs and as you're developing as a player, you want to get a good hi-hat stand that you can rely on that's also not gonna break down on you. You don't want it to break while you're playing. Same with the kick pedal. Probably the next important upgrade that we haven't gotten to yet as far as sound goes is the snare. Now, a lot of times the snare drum that comes with a drum set is gonna be a good snare. It's probably gonna be a wooden snare. And most of the time, if you replace the heads, put good snare wires on it, put some of those pure sound wires on there, maybe replace the throw off if it needs that, but it'll probably be fine. Get the snare tension just right, get it tuned up just right, and you're gonna have a good snare sound. The cool thing about drums is that you can make a cheap drum sound good. Unlike cymbals where cheap cymbals are cheap cymbals, you can make a cheap snare drum sound pretty good. So that's why I say the cymbal upgrade needs to come before the snare upgrade. Though you may disagree or you may find a great deal on a snare that you wanna buy early on and that's cool. But maybe you'd like an alternate sound, maybe get a metal snare. I've got a couple metal snares that I really like that are different from the wooden snares that have come with drum sets that I bought. Really, the only thing left here is replace the rest of the hardware if you want to. If you want better cymbal stands, uh, maybe a, a sturdier snare stand that's not going to hop around or slide um, while you're hitting two and four on the snare. Um, but those aren't major upgrades like the hi-hat stand and the kick drum pedal. You could even get by with cheaper, lighter weight hardware on the cymbals, especially if you're having to lug them in a hardware bag. It can actually be kind of nice having lighter weight hardware. But if you're a hard hitter, um, or the hardware takes a lot of abuse on the road maybe, then it can be very beneficial to have sturdy stuff that you know you can count on and that's gonna stay in place no matter how hard you're hitting. So now we've pretty much upgraded everything and we've gone from starting out with the bare minimum of pad and sticks to a cheap drum set to getting better cymbals, better hardware, better snare. Really the, the only thing left at this point is possibly refinishing the shells of the drum set, depending on if you bought a kit that has that that wrap on it. A lot of kits don't have that. If you buy a, a new like PDP starter kit, those don't have the wrap, which is cool. It looks a lot better not having that. But if the kit you bought does have that cheap, sort of shiny glimmering wrap, you can tear that off, sand the shells down and refinish it. And that gives your drums a really natural, really cool look that'll make people go, oh, that's cool. What kind of drum set is that? Even though it's just a really basic kit. A lot of times people hear with their eyes and if you're taking your kit out on a lot of gigs, then it can be really cool to have sort of a unique look to it because that'll grab people's attention. So that's just a cosmetic thing that is obviously not important, but it can be a really cool, really fun thing to do if you want to. And also at this point, your kit might be a professional level kit at this point if we've got good drums like we started out with good shells we've we've got them tuned up well with good heads on them we've got good cymbals good snare good hardware 
then it might as well be a professional level kit. And if you've been working on your playing skill the whole time, you've been working on yourself as a drummer, then you've got that to match the great gear. And that's a great combination. Knowing how to play drums really well and having really great drums to play, that's, that's a great match. If there's anything I want you to take away from this, it's that you don't have to start out with great gear. You can even be a working, gigging drummer and not have the best gear in the world, but you can still sound really great when you've got good heads on your drums that you know how to tune, you've got cymbals that you're hitting correctly, you're hitting your drums right, you're playing well. 90% of a drum sound really has to do with the drummer, how he's hitting the toms, the way he's playing the snare, how tight he has the snare wires, the way he has the drums tuned, the way he has the hi-hats adjusted, the angles of the cymbals. Those are all factors. The way he adjusts things and the way he strikes them is 90% of the sound. And that's why a lot of drummers come back to the saying, it's the Indian, not the arrow. We as drummers shouldn't be too concerned about our gear where we're busy accumulating and piling up gear, but not working on our playing itself because that's even more important than the gear. So it's definitely a very practical to take a frugal approach to gear as a starting out drummer or somebody getting back into the drums. So I really hope this has helped you guys, especially if this is you, if you're starting out drums for the first time, or if you know somebody who is getting back into the drums or starting for the first time, share this video with them. I hope it'll help them out and make this, this whole process of thinking about buying a drum set a lot easier for them. And if this video helped you out, then you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I will see you at the next video. Thanks everybody for watching.